Okay, so um, thank you once again for patience. Um, topic of today's call is um, I think one of the more tangled ones in the um, in the annals of open active history. This is facility use and individual facility use. Um, The um, modeling is rather complicated, and I think it's been kind of left to grow complicated in the, in the backlog for a while now. Um, I'll hope to bring up the slides just now because I'm afraid I'm not on my laptop at the moment, so I don't have any of my friendly bookmarks. Um, however, if while I'm waiting for Hello? We heard while you're waiting. That's okay. what we're asking you. <sighs> um, while you're waiting for uh, my slides to show up, uh, maybe we could just do a quick round of introductions. Um, Nathan, can you lead us off, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Nathan Salter. I'm one of the developers for Streamline and Playfinder. Um, and we're currently building an open active integration. Okay, Izzy? Yeah, I'm Izzy Champion. I'm Data and Innovation Manager at Sport England, and I kind of run things from open active from a Sport England perspective. Uh, Nick? Uh, Nick Evans. Um, work um, for the ODR. Seems to be broad, isn't it? Yeah. Relation to open active. <laughs> uh huh. Um, I'm afraid I'm not too sure who Thomas's iPhone is. Hi, Tim. It's uh, me, Tom oh, okay. Marley. Um, oh, I am um, uh, one of the founders at. Okay. And I'm Tim Hill, and I am a technical lead with uh, the Open Active Project for the ODI. Um, and I'm hoping uh, to just get myself to a more Wi-Fi friendly location here. Um, I'm hoping eventually I can bring up the slides for this for you. Um, so the topic is kind of a heavy one from a modeling perspective. Um, and the difficulty and Nick might want to um, jump in on my summary of what's going on here. But the difficulty is essentially that we're trying to mod uh, model uh, several different entity types um, and they're fairly complex. Um, okay. So let me just pull up the slides here. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So the difficulty is that we are trying to model essentially space um, and time. So just small things like that, basically. Um, the spaces are in the most complex case, uh, large spaces that can be used for multiple purposes and activities and are therefore subdivisable. Um, and then the times are the number of times that people have got that they can actually access those spaces. Um, so in the most complicated scenario, well, maybe that's going about it backwards. In the least complicated scenario, what we have is a kind of facility such as a squash court. Um, and then we've got a range of times it could be used for in say 45 minute slots or something like that. Um, in a medium complexity scenario, we have say three tennis courts available through a single organization. Um, it's possible to book those in say 60 minute slots. However, one of those is distinguished from the others by being the main court 
and is more desirable for booking and maybe has a different rate associated with it than the other tennis courts. And then in the most complicated scenario, we have, say, a large central hall in a sports facility, which could be configured for two badminton courts, two tennis courts, one basketball court, or uh, multiple play spaces, something like that, um, with, again, a number of prices associated with each of those and a number of mutually incompatible configurations. So if you're using, if you're using it as one large basketball court, you can't use it as two badminton courts, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the nature of the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, and I feel like we've gone a little bit in circles over the last month or so, um, arriving at a correct modeling of this. Um, the original approach was to have something called facility use, which covered the sort of most generic situation. So you might say tennis court. Um, and access through that model would give you access to any one of say three tennis courts, but it was assumed that the end user and the facility were not that interested in which of those three was assigned. Um, more specific instances could be modeled using individual facility use. So that allowed you to model each of those three tennis courts um, individually and designate them A, B, and C for instance. Um, and then those could each be associated with time slots that allowed their use. Um, recently, uh, Nathan, who's I think closest to the actual implementation of this kind of thing, uh, had a bit of a dialogue with Nick on one of the GitHub issues and indicated that um, as far as you were concerned, Nathan, if I read you rightly, essentially the most granular modeling was what was preferred there. So in fact, you could do away with the upper layer of abstraction and simply model all of the individual individual facility uses um, and forget about the layer of abstraction on top saying here are all of our tennis courts here are all of our badminton courts however that seemed to evolve in discussion whereby the individual facility uses do end up being aggregated but kind of as a physical location rather than being aggregated as something in a more general class called facility use. Yeah. Um, so it, it seemed like that was another way of skinning the cat, uh, but sort of ran into the same kind of complexity in actual day-to-day -day use. Is that, a, is that a fair summary? Yeah, I think so, because you've got the two different ways of modeling it. Um, so we at Streamline, we model it by taking what we call a space, which is like something like a sports hall or an outdoor area. And then we subdivide that into facilities, uh, which can potentially overlap. Um, but you can also potentially group it by activity. Um, the problem with grouping it by activity is that then you don't have any of that information about where it is. So if you've got, um, all of your football pitches. Some of them might be indoors, some of them might be outdoors, some of them might have different surfaces. So when we were designing our system, we basically decided that the most granular approach is the most appropriate because then the client can decide where the subdivision needs to take place or where the aggregation needs to take place, sorry. Okay. Um, and that's a solution that's been working fairly well for you, but it sounds like there's a lot of sort of manual matching up that, that's involved as a result of that. Yes, that's correct. Right. Um, but it's, it's, from a systems point of view, trying to automate that would just be undesirable and over complex. Yeah, so we'd need to provide the opportunity for venue managers to, or to decide what was grouped together. Mm -hmm. And that kind of UI would be very complicated. Sorry, to so, just understand, in, in, the, um, in the issue, uh, Nathan, we wrote, uh, I think your example was indoor sports hall, badminton, A, B, C, D, uh, outdoor pitches. Um, the space that is the indoor sports hall, that, that already exists, I guess, in, in, in the model, is that right? Yes. Okay, great. And, and is the, um, the type of activity 
that we're talking about badminton versus football is that modeled at the level of a sports hall i assume not it's the badminton a level is it yeah it's badminton a has got the activity uh because you can get situations where uh especially for indoor sports halls where you can have badminton and table tennis and tennis and other things going on all at the same time mm -hmm. So it would be possible to um, create a facility use in inverted commas that we've got at the moment in the model by um, looking at the space and then looking for each activity, I guess. You could, you can create, a, you could create a facility use out of the space and the activity, I guess. Yeah, we'd probably also want to group it by the physical location and yeah. also by um, the price, pricing scheme that it's used. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Does the you physical location situations where they're different? So yeah. I'm sorry. You can get situations where they're different, like um, Tim mentioned, where you've got like a main court that's more desirable. Sure. So the 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 pricing at the minute, I think, is at the slot level usually. Is that yeah. right? Perfect. So yeah. that could. And then there's indicative pricing that sits at the facility use or individual facility use level. Yeah. So, so it sounds like we could. So it sounds like the system you've got there does map onto facility use in terms of we could as, as you say as long as we we um group by location space and activity we can create a pseudo facility use out of that yeah for purposes of grouping so I, I i think that the um the the thrust of my question um tim was more in the direction of the reasons we had facility use in the first place mm -hmm. and thinking about how given those reasons individual facility use and facility use can kind of coexist happily so i don't know if that's worth it worth kind of going through uh in the sense of actually being able to map one onto the other or convert one to the other or rather right. represent one as the other i suppose right so when i so exactly so so in in looking at this github issue i actually went back to the w3c call uh like two years ago when we agreed to use facility use and individual facility use to kind of remember what the logic was mm -hmm. um at the time and i actually the got uh, everyone present well every organization present on this call was present on that call um and um and the the main reasoning for having facility use was if you imagine a search search results page where you want to search for a badminton court a court at 7 p.m on tuesday you kind of you probably want to list the results by the facility rather than or the location rather than by the individual courts so you kind of you, you want your search results should probably be you know leisure center a mm. court one two three um leisure center b um court whatever in insight so you're kind of your search results are leisure center level. Mm -hmm. Now you could do that with, with location actually, um, probably without needing to worry about it at the facility use level. But I think the, the idea was that, um, that that would be, uh, that would be useful. And then out of the back of that came a conversation with, with about what booking systems, some booking systems manage this at the aggregate level, for example, legend, legend, uh, slots are managed at the, um, facility use level not the individual facility use level whereas gladstone is managed at the individual facility use not the facility use level so um then basically then therefore if we have both types of systems and it sounds like um system nathan's describing is the individual facility use similar to gladstone mm -hmm. um then because both exist as a, a way of um representing that the opportunity so number of spaces uh in that um sorry number of slots at a particular time um, that can be booked so a b c um so we'll need to figure out a way in that search results page of bringing these things together in so so i'm not sure if that's mapping them together or but that's that's right, the some, some way of aligning them with each other um yeah but then but then even in thinking about that kind of thought well actually does it does it need the alignment can we not just represent can we not just have the search results page include both because if it includes individual facility use and facility use, then when there's an individual opportunity, you'll see court A, court B, court C in the in the results. And when you haven't got that level of granularity, it would just come through as Hamilton Court mm -hmm. to to available kind of book now. Um, so so I, I guess my yeah, so it's, it's kind of thinking from the search side really, 
is there a use case where we actually need to worry about mapping these two things together? Or is it just the case that kind of whichever form they're presented in, you just go ahead and book through that form? Um, when, therefore, what that would mean is the main rule is every booking system needs to choose one. You can't do, you shouldn't do both, or at least um, your slots should only exist in one or the other. So if you have a individual level slots, you should use individual facilities and your slot should exist in there. If you have aggregate slots, your slot should exist in facility use. But you shouldn't have a situation where you have both, which is kind of what Gladstone is implementation is doing at the moment. Right. Hmm. And is there is there a sort of a problem with the domain that's actually being modeled? Is there is the problem with reality in the sense that would it sometimes be the case that somebody might want to book the facility rather than an individual facility use. So if we have say main sports hall, um, and then we've got a bunch of activities that are subdivisions of that, and somebody, hmm. yeah, how do, how do we deal with that situation um, if, it's, if it's an actual possibility? Do we have to model that as yet another individual facility use, i.e. booking the whole facility in that case? Can I just um, clarify some terminology quickly? <laughs> you can try. So a facility use is a group of uh, individual facility users with the same activity. I think not necessarily the same activity. I think it really is the... No, no it... Oh. oh uh, okay, my understanding of it was that it could be, it would be the facility which could be associated in some cases with a range of activities. Get this back up and check. Um, because this seems to deal, this seems to touch on the next issue that I was going to raise, which was discussed, which was, do you create a kind of ridiculous flurry update um, if you've got a space which is capable of hosting multiple activities, but they're mutually incompatible? Um, what happens if somebody, say, books the main sport hall as one basketball court rather than two badminton courts. How do you deal with that kind of complexity? So at the moment, that's, um, that, so that was the call, that was the call that, that happened, whatever it was, the last call on the topic. Right, yeah. And that was raised as a specific concern. Um, and uh, there was quite a lot of debate about it. And the conclusion was to just crack on because it probably wasn't a big deal in real life. Mm -hmm. um, because the complexity of solving the problem of trying to not because the way that the, the spec currently does it is the booking system itself separates the sports hall into several products and the logic of what configuration of sports hall is available at what times and you know can you put a trampoline out with two badminton courts but one badminton court and two table tennis and all that stuff that's all the booking system um, as soon as you start to try and create that representation in a, in a more compact form you need to put all these rules in place so that you can meaningfully say right, right that's booked so these things are no longer available. And when you start doing that, then it all gets, it gets really hairy. So the decision last time was, let's keep it simple at the product level. And if it starts to get out of hand with the number of requests and updates that happen, then, um, then that's something to look at. Mm -hmm. But given that the, um, the, you know, like Gladstone feeds and the legend feeds and the number of facilities they have, um, it, as soon as you, as, when you get to the end of the feed, which is like two days, oh, sorry, um, it's 14 days ahead of bookings, um, but two days behind. So when you get to the end of the feed, which is, I guess, 16 days of slots, it's actually quite quick to keep up to date because minute by minute, you don't have that many updates of these things. So even, even you know, um, paging every few seconds with 500 items on a page, if someone books, I mean, the, the volume you need to get to to have a problem with this is, is higher than than the biggest of the facilities that, that exist at the moment. Right, I, I think the reason I mentioned that at this juncture was, it seemed that an implication of that was that facility use could be used to represent a multi-purpose space rather than already implicitly assuming an identity of activity across the space all the time. So I think, so I'm just going to read from the spec. Sure. Um, the, a facility use is a product that is offered to potential participants. And that, um, so that includes the activity or activities for which the okay. facility is being used. Generally speaking, 
this is so so to take a real example right if you if it was the same price to book a community center for a half day or mm. hour or something and in that community center you could pull out the kit for badminton or you could pull out the kit for whatever you wanted to pull out right then that's an example of this is the same price everything's the same the description is the same it's a multi-use facility in the true sense of the word um no one needs to know what you've booked you just book the space and use whatever kits in there and put it back at the end um, that's a good example where you might have more than one activity. But in the, the case of leisure centers and places where you generally need to know what's being booked because they set it up and tear it down afterwards, um, then that's where most products tend to actually have a single activity associated because they want to know what the leisure center wants to know who's booking badminton versus squash, right? Or versus um, table tennis in the same, in the same space. So if you had one multi-purpose space and just say for the sake of argument, it was. Uh, um, it's, although you could do, you could combine them. It's not that useful for people to do that. Uh, sorry, I missed part of that. Um, so it's, hmm. supposing you had uh, one facility that could be used for badminton or for tennis, say, and those were identical courts. Um, ignoring some restrictions there. Um, so then in that case, that would just be represented as a sing as two separate facility uses. Is that the intention then? If they had different prices and they were separately bookable, then yes. Right, okay. Or more, more if they were separately bookable rather than different prices. Right. If, if the thing you're booking, if it, it, when we are modeling reality in that it's the product we're modeling. So if the thing you're booking, if the, if the thing you call up reception and say, can I book X genuinely is multi-use, so can I book the hall for 12 o'clock? And they don't care what you do with it because all the bits are in there and you can do what you need to do. Then that's how you would model it. Then that has multiple activities, that hall. But in the more usual case, they do care what you do with it because they need to know how their facilities are being used. So therefore, it usually has one specific activity. Can I ask a really stupid question? Or maybe it's not so stupid, but a simple question maybe. Um, is, I have no idea, but is this managed on the data publisher side in that if I know that my, my Can either be used, you know, it's got, this, it's got the lines for a basketball or free Or not. Hmm. It looks like his screen share's died. Uh, However, I am back. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yes, Izzy, it, it, I, yes, it's, 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 it should be straightforward to answer your question. I just thought it might be helpful to have a visual for, for that. Yeah, I've also been, uh, whilst you've been talking, kind of messaging um, my colleague Mark, who leads on Active Places, around how they model multi-use. But having listened to more of the conversation, I think what they don't, almost care about is how it's actually used. It's more a case of what there is. So yeah. I don't think that really relates to this issue, but I can um, chuck it either in the chat or on the GitHub if it is of use to kind of look at what Active Places does, but it's more about what exists in that space rather than um, how it's actually used. Um, but yes. certainly um, sure. the, booking, the booking bit is always the interesting, tricky, knotty bit, right? Well, yeah, so this is, I suppose the, the focus of this is about the product that Leisure Centre is selling. Uh, and and I guess, therefore, it's not necessarily about the space so much as it is about the product. And yeah. that's what changes the, it's, it's an opportunity rather than a space. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You need to be exactly. able to understand, yeah. How the space can be used at that specific moment in time, yeah. Exactly, that's right. Um, so, 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 Tim, could you jump into that GitHub issue and just scroll down to the image that's in there, possibly? Um... Depends what you mean by image. Uh, do, you, do you mean this one? 
Uh, we're still just seeing the slides. We can't see, uh, sorry, we can just see the slides on your screen at the moment. Okay, hold on. It's about uh, two thirds of the way down. Yep. That's the one. Okay, so this is a handy example courtesy of Sam at OpenPlay, uh, who manages the Burgess Park courts, which is where I uh, play tennis. So um, you can see here that there are seven courts in Burgess Park and the practice pool. So the way this would be represented usually um, is either, well, I, so I'll take the assumptions that we're working under from what I've just said earlier around one or the other, right? So both isn't an option right now. So if you represent this using facility use, you wouldn't see this screen. You would just see tennis court and practice wall, and they would be your two options. And you either choose the tennis court or the practice wall, and then when you get there, they tell you which court you've booked. Um, or that when you get the booking um, confirmation. Whereas if you were using individual facility use, you would have all those uh, courts there um, would be individual facility uses. Okay. Um, does that help, Tim? It does. Um, I'm just trying to um, get back to the motivation for the actual GitHub issue of, re of replacing individual facility use with individual slot. Um, so that amounts essentially to combining combining the temporal and the space information, basically. Subclassing slot, so that we end up with, with um, another entity, individual slot, which is pointing at both the slot and at the, at the facility use. So are you saying that a slot could have multiple opportunities in it, but an individual slot would just be a single opportunity? Well, I think, I think what this is trying to, so what I said earlier about maybe picking one or the other, this mm -hmm. is trying to combine both. So yeah. in this example, your slot contains individual slots, which is why I think actually this is probably flawed because in, in this, what, what this is trying to do is find, a, find some homogenous representation that would work across every system. Mm -hmm where you can kind of choose to represent one or the other. But what that would mean for you guys is you would need to do that grouping at the slot level. Yeah. Which is obviously not useful, right? Because that's not how you store your data. No. So, right. uh, so the, the new proposal would be simply to, to pick a lane, essentially. Well, yes. And I guess the question then is just, just in terms of the search side of things. So I guess putting our other hats on in terms of, you know, the, um, using the data, which I know everybody here is, as well as producing it. Um, what, what then do you, does that stop you doing anything basically? Like if you can imagine having, having lots of feeds that you're pulling data from, I mean, Nathan, you might have already had to solve this. I don't know. Cause some of the, the feeds already facility feeds have got facility use in them. So I guess how, how are we reconciling that pulling data, which is facility use and pulling data, which is individual facility use. And then I guess, um, yeah, I guess if we just treat treat them as the same, then it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. How, I mean, how are you how are you kind of normalizing them at the moment? Well, we currently only consume our own data, so we only use individual facilities. Okay, problem to come then. That's closer to our model. Um, so when you pull the Gladstone stuff, for example, um, um, hmm. um, Tim, could you, um, this is going to be a bit shameless and apologies for those on the call that, um, are not part of Playfinder, but that's, it's got a good interface that might be good to test this with. Um, Tim, would you mind just going on Playfinder and searching for tennis at 7 PM? And this will hopefully give us the, the actual problem. Yeah. In London, probably, because then you have to pick a city, don't you? Yeah, there aren't many courts open at the moment, but most of the open ones are in London. Okay. Hmm. 
London, I think you can just type London. Yeah, you can just type London. It uses the um, Google Maps. I feel yeah. like I already told it. Uh... Great. Uh... Okay, so we've got. Hmm. So it doesn't show you on this search what times are available, right? Uh, no, so if you go into, um, not one of those, if you go into a, the first result, um, it will have a calendar on it. If I, if I go into book online? Yeah. So you, you, in your interface, you used to have, I mean, last time we had this conversation, nice, okay, there it is. Actually, interestingly, that view is a facility use view, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's a facility use view, which we aggregate from the data that we get. This is what's happened and you can see how this has worked both ways. So I think facility, this being a facility use view was an input into the previous decision making around this plus legend, making this obvious for both sides. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't, so, so to be clear then, even without, I thought we were gonna need a different example, but just using this example, we still need to be able to map from individual facility use to facility use for this then. Uh, potentially, yeah. Um, the only restriction for us that we would want is that a facility use is only for a single activity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the question is how the mapping for us. Okay, so we do have to do that mapping. Um, and the question becomes how but the answer is probably not individual slot. Okay, here's, here's, here's a hypothesis. What if, uh, well, sorry, a proposal on the hypothesis. What if, what if we um, have a, if we, if we link everything to facility use, which I guess is what I said in the thread, Nathan, around you could link what you already have to facility use there. So, yeah. that, so all data published has a facility use. Uh, even if it is individual facility use and the slots exist to either, um, then I wonder if we can use that to um, to do the aggregation. Effectively, what that means is on the search side, we'll need to create like a sudo, like a, a facility use slot, won't we? Do you see what I mean? Because each of these is, that's what one of these is. Um, so, so yeah. you're you're looking at the time. You're basically looking for every time. You're looking at three o'clock at a facility use, and you're taking all the individual slots available, and you're kind of creating one from them. Yeah. So these slots, when it says books, it booked. It means that all of the available opportunities have been booked. So you could have a case where I don't think it's the case here, but if there were two tennis courts, then you could book the same slot twice. One for the first call, one for the second. Can I just check, um, Tom, because you've had some thinking about this as well. In in your view of an interface that books facilities, would you do this like it's presented here with, or would you be able to pick which court? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Um, so our thinking around it is, yeah, it would kind of be a similar view to how it is now. Um, and for the user, it wouldn't particularly matter what core. So so we're not using the open play model of kind of one to seven like we had on there where bo both of you guys are thinking very much like this. Yeah, it seems to be the, the simplest solution for both sides. Um, mm. And yeah, I don't think it's important for the, for the end user. Yeah, agreed. Interesting. Because huh. yeah, the venue wants to know which court it is, but the user doesn't really mind. Right. So that's, so that's probably where legends come from with their model. Yeah, so if you start at the venue manager, then you basically go as granular as possible. But if you start at the end user like we did with Playfinder, then you get kind of the most generic model. Aha, there we go. So that's, that's where this issue's come from then. Great that we've identified it. So facility use for the user, individual facility use for the venue owner. Yep. Uh, and then we need to, to map it together. Um, hmm. I mean, is there a case just for getting rid of individual facility use in a sense? 
in terms of its representation to the outside world. I mean, if the system needs to know individual facility use, that's kind of the system's business. Well, so I pro probably should be rep represent other voices on the call. So MCR Active would, would do want to have the ability to choose a core for their product. Right. Um, they want to ensure that you get the same experience as you get on the, on the Gladstone or um, the website, their own website as you would on their website. So they don't want to, um, if someone, if, so um, a friend of mine's um, dad plays uh, and has played for a long time um, badminton every week. And he likes a specific court mm -hmm. because the lighting in the in the sports hall is such that if you get the wrong court, then you kind of get blinded by it and he gets a headache. So for that regular user, that court is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and, and it's it's so I'm, I'm pulling on different things, but that's why MCR, that's the kind of use case MCR have in mind when they're saying they want to be able to offer the same uh, functionality. So I, I don't. So I don't know if we can get rid of it completely because I, I do. I, I, I do expect that but there'll be other reasons why you want one court over the other, right? Um, but if you know a venue well, for example, and there's four squash courts, and you know that you know four is actually was built after the others, and you know is a bit sketch, you probably avoid it. Um, I guess otherwise, I, maybe there are ways, but I'm not sure how you would make like if you know that there are three courts available. As the venue, I'm, you would need to know which ones are and aren't booked because if then, let's say two of them are booked and one of them isn't, and someone turns up on the day, you kind of need to know which ones are are and aren't available. It might not matter. I can I agree that for most most users, won't care which court they get picked. Although definitely that I can see the 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 for one of the the diehards really caring about court number four being being the one to either have or avoid. Um, but I think for, I can totally see why from the venue perspective, they, they will need to know which ones are and aren't available, whether or not it matters to the, to the individual who's actually booked that court, if that makes sense. But I, I don't know how you would do that. I'm sure there are ways. Well, I, think that that my, 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 thinking, my thinking was more about what goes into an open data feed. So yes, obviously the, the systems preserve some kind of information when, uh, when a booking is made there is a definite court that is assigned to the to the user um but i was just wondering whether that needed representation in the open data level um, um I mean, sorry go on, Tim. yeah i mean if the goal is to to reproduce sort of the representational richness of a complete lms which it sounds like is stipulated in mcr active then yeah obviously that won't wash um, um on the on the on the github issue if you if you scroll i did uh, i've realized there's a proposal actually in november which has got some code in it which might be quite useful um if you uh you maybe scroll to that which is the second comment in the issue um and this this is actually if you go down a little bit further this is showing an ex example of what it would look like to include both in your feed so you've got there an individual slot inside the slot and so we've got both shown and so I guess just the more we talk about this, the more what I'm wondering here is, I guess we said at the beginning, it would be complicated for systems to surface both probably, much easier to surface one or the other, but that pushes the problem into the aggregation layer, right? Into whoever it is that's pulling the data and pulling it together. So we end up with another, another normalization problem, which yeah. is something that obviously other open active um, use cases struggle with is bringing together different types of data because of the flexibility in the model. So, so just to jump in, I've just had a quick look over our kind of wireframes for this. We have it kind of represented in two ways. So at the availability level, it's um, the facility use. And then once you go through, you can select the kind of the court or the pitch number. Um, right. So that's how it's represented on our side. Right. Okay. So you do have that kind of granular data as well. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess the thing is that I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is, is there anything actually, are we adding anything by forcing the representation that's on the screen right here with slots and individual slots? What I mean by that is, can we not determine that from the data? Is that there's nothing additional being, being said here because if we know the individual slots are part, are part of the same individual facility use, which all grouped into facility use, you could infer 
what the slot would be because you're just it's just a grouping and so if if all it is is a grouping then rather than putting the burden on every publisher to publish both maybe we should just get like we said at the beginning and to publish one or the other make it easier for the publisher but make it slightly more difficult for the consumer um which has generally been the bias so far so therefore we just need to make sure we've got some clear aggregation uh, logic that everyone knows about that we can use to to combine the two um yeah that has the benefit of being sort of a standard approach uh in that it's more of a benefit uh, more of a burden on the consumer but i suppose if they've lifted a very similar burden in the past um with regard to scheduled session and session series and that kind of thing um then it's not quite as onerous as you might think yes i mean the focus has always been to make it as easy as possible for the publisher because they're the ones which are the most um difficult to convert right every user is very happy to crack on um when given enough uh, commercial incentive as this is all about booking here isn't it um but but yeah um that's that's been the reason so so i guess if you know if we think about having a conversation with gladstone to go and do this or legend and do both and how much how long that would take and how complicated that would be and, and all the rest of it it might be worth keeping it simple just so that we can get this stuff into those systems um without any additional complexity and then um and then i and then i feel like maybe in well in the in the in the open source harvester and in you know in, in maybe in the documentation we make it really clear how you you do that grouping how one could store the data so that that grouping would be easy to do for example yeah i don't i don't think it has a lot of merit but it does have the merit of consistency <laughs> i think that's um um yeah i think that tips it um and it also has the merit i think of not blocking uh nathan just at the moment um yeah i mean it stops us having to do any changes from our side apart from um add more information about the facility use um so that can be grouped on the client side yeah yeah and it sounds like you already you already have all that data it's just conceptualized slightly differently so the the mapping yeah. is very really straightforward yeah okay yeah we'd have to generate the facility uses on the fly but that's not, not a huge issue okay. um okay i guess we i guess that just needs to be I mean, it's more or less there in the thread i think it just needs to be summarized in fact um yeah and in fairness this is exactly what model 2.0 already does so we haven't actually changed the model which is i guess nice um the uh yeah the the any kind of com combining the two would need to be something to um to i guess think about separately um but then i mean to be honest if you i'm just thinking about how that would look if you if you have a search results page you would have the search results by um whatever whatever slot was available right you would just you would just list out the slots and if those slots were individual facility use they would be that that would be what they were if they were facility use that would be what they were instead so um yeah my only um slight comment is i've just had a quick check and it seems like individual facility use as a subclass of facility use mm -hmm. is that intentional in terms of the um it's the different types of inheritance so it's subclasses from the perspective of the properties it has right so, so it's inheritance for functionality rather than for encapsulation okay. exactly that yeah so so yeah they're not that it's because schema.org does prop it's the property inheritance coming from schema.org model all the way up right yeah so they're inheriting from product or service or whatever they're inheriting from. Yeah. So it's because it's it's they've got similar properties from them because. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it's more like a notational convenience. I feel like this might be something to. So, so here's the thing, right? I don't think anyone has so far tried to actually do this in real life. No one's tried to combine individual facilities and facilities used to guess that are currently working at this they've already done the work so changing it would be more work um it sounds like smaller systems i mean you guys right now are both working on um this building this stuff into your into your functionality so 
I wonder if it, is it worth us kind of revisiting this conversation a little bit further down the line when we realize we have to do this combining because I feel like when we actually come to do the work it's so this is quite this is conceptually it feels like it's quite easy to do but I feel like when we get there we might um remember this call and think um <laughs> what um so maybe that's a, maybe maybe it's worth us um kind of waiting until we've got the end to end working with yeah, I think that makes sense because when Cloudstone and GL release their open active feeds to us and we start using them, um, we'll probably learn a lot more about um, the different ways that people integrate stuff from like a client perspective. If it's helpful, they've already released them. So they're available to look at. I, I don't know where they are in your priority list to kind of pull in, but they're not bookable yet, which might be why you haven't looked at them. Yeah, so it's, it's not useful to us until they're bookable. Good yeah, one. looking is coming. <laughs> <laughs> I would, um, yeah, err on the on the side of favouring the bigger systems for whichever's the kind of easiest thing for them to implement. And yeah, I'm sure it would be simpler for us to work out later down the line. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a blanket statement about a lot of aspects of the specification. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's just as as we go. Um, but how the have the proposal as just discussed as our kind of default understanding going forward, but amenable to reflection and change over time. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we're, we're just about done at this point. The only other issue that was raised, uh, I've already referred to, um, and this was just the sheer volume of updates that can be created in, in this with multi-function spaces and that kind of thing. So not really a concern about the modeling as such, um, but a concern more just about the fact that if you do have, say, one multi-function space with a lot of different configurations, um, you end up having to issue a lot of updates. If I understood the issue conclusion correctly, Nick, mm -hmm. essentially the response to that was, well, that's just about caching it's not imposing a huge burden. Yeah, that's right. This was a very, this was much more of a theoretical concern. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was more about, um, yes, exactly. And the video is the one referenced there. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's one of those things that I think everyone looked at and thought, wow, combinatorial explosion, that sounds crazy, that there's no way we can, we can deal with that. But actually in reality, there's only so many ways you can use a space, right? I mean, most people only use it for five or six things. And even then, you know, not at the same time necessarily. So the number of times that you can book five aside and that takes out badminton, you know, it's not necessarily that flexible. So um, yeah, it, has, it just hasn't been an issue. And, and um, the resulting data volumes from the big systems with, you know, 250 sites across the UK, which is GLL, right? It's not even, it's not even close to, um, but, I mean, 20, I don't know how many tennis courts they've got across 250 sites, but um, yeah, it's not even close to hitting anything that we, you know, um, the whole fusion estate kind of, um, you get one change every five minutes, maybe. That's it. Okay, so should we just close this issue then? Oh yeah, sorry, I wasn't aware it was still open. Yeah, yeah it's, it's still open, yeah, which, which, which was what made me uh, wonder if there was anything lingering there. Uh, oh, I see, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'd, I'd suggest, yes, closing it until we, um, yeah, and, and unless we have a, a problem down the line when someone says, hey, this is, this is getting out of, um, this is getting crazy. Okay. We'll shut that one down then. Okay, we're at the top of the hour, but um, is there any other business to be um, to be discussed just uh, in the last couple of minutes? I think all good from, from my end. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, okay. Nick. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, talk to you all later. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you.